we are hosting this webinar to both explain a little bit about Act 60 donations and how they work, and also mostly to let you know about Tech My School, which is a qualifying Puerto Rico um, charity that we are endorsing from Puerto Rico Advantage. So we'll be talking a little bit about Act 60 and um, what you need to fulfill the requirements for charitable donations. And then we'll dive into talking about Tech My School. So um, if you are an Act 60 um, investor, or even if in the past you got an Act 22 investor decree from Puerto Rico, then you do have a requirement to make a charitable donation. Um, some Act 22 people uh, only have to donate 5000 or some even none if they were pretty early adapt adopters. But um, Act 60 investors do need to donate 10k per year, starting in their second year. Um, half of that can go to any approved nonprofit. Um, so 1101-.01 is the code in the Puerto Rico law that corresponds to 501c3, which you might be familiar with in the U.S. And Tech My School actually has both of those. Um, there's another half of the 5K that has to go to one that's approved on the CECFL list, which is about um, improving things for children in Puerto Rico or fighting child poverty was the original way they said it. Um, Tech My School will soon be on that list too. They just are going through an approval process that should be over sometime next year. So by next year, they should also be able to qualify for both halves of the 10K. Um, you have to do the donations um, just by the end of the calendar year. You need to keep your receipts because at some point, if you're audited, you might be asked um, to prove that you did the donations. Um, and the biggest thing to remember is you also cannot donate to any nonprofit that you own or control. They will look at that. That uh, disqualifies them for the Act 60, although obviously you could still donate your own money any place you choose over and above the Act 60. <laughs> Can we go to the next slide? Yeah. So I'm going to introduce Robbie Cobbs, who is a friend and partner of ours. Um, we haven't really endorsed charities in the past through Puerto Rico Advantage, but we've had a lot of clients ask. And after meeting Robbie and hearing about Tech My School, we felt really good about them, just in terms of their transparency, the actual good that they're doing, and the qualifications that the leadership of Tech My School brings. So we're really excited to say, yes, we absolutely endorse this one um, for your charitable donations. So take it away, Robbie. Thank you uh, so much. And it's been such a pleasure working with you. Um, yeah, so generally speaking, uh, this is just an overall general speaking, uh, when it comes to nonprofits and donating, you definitely want to research the nonprofit that you're donating to. Um, one of the ways you can um, check to see kind of what's going on and, and how transparent um, the company is and where the money is going and those kind of things, you can use Candid or GuideStar. Um, ours is obviously up there. We're a, a platinum transparency nonprofit. And then you can also um, very easily kind of see how things are going by volunteering. So if there's something that you're passionate about, if you have a little bit of time, it's always good to kind of see the people who are running the organization and um, I guess getting your hands dirty uh, would be a way of putting it. But um, yeah, so let's go ahead and move on. Uh, I'll quickly tell you uh, about our story. Um, this is my family. We are international educators. I'm originally from San Diego, California, and we had just been working at uh, various American international schools around the world. We were coming in from uh, Africa. So we, we had just finished a contract in Lagos, Nigeria, and we were taking a sabbatical um, I was writing a book on ed tech uh, for teachers to better improve their instruction and their career using technology. So that was uh, it. Um, so we chose Puerto Rico because it's obviously a beautiful place. And also because, uh, you know, it's kind of a bit of a venture, but it's also America. They have Costco. And, uh, you know, we, we fell in love with it fairly quickly. Uh, I've been to 55 countries and uh yeah, Puerto Rico is a really special place. Uh, it's just got such a great combination of culture and, and weather. 
and uh, and the people and just everything. So uh, we we fell in love and bought a house, and uh, my little family's here walking on the beach. Um, but we have kids. We have uh, an eight and a ten year old, and so we checked out a bunch of different, uh, both public and private uh, schools on the island. And we were just absolutely shocked at the state of uh, education in Puerto Rico. Um, first, it was the eye test, seeing the classroom, seeing what was inside there, what was happening. And as an educator of 20 years, uh, you can kind of see through the matrix a bit. Uh, you, you can see really quickly how things are operating and what kind of quality of education kids are getting. And it was just shocking to see kind of an African level uh, education happening here for all these American kids. And so it was just mind blowing. Like, how did this happen? Why is this happening? Um, and then we started doing some research and the data was matching the eye test. Um, first, as you may or may not know, US is, Puerto Rico is a US territory. It's been a part of America since before Arizona was a state. So it's not like this is a new colony or a new territory or a new uh, state of America. It's been with us for a very long time. Um, the you kind of get what you pay for. So Puerto Rican teachers are the lowest paid uh, by nearly double in, in America. And partly to the re result of that is that the average eighth grader here is going to score about at a third or fourth grade level in uh, the continental U.S. So it's three to five grade levels below that. Um, it's the worst in Europe, the worst in North America. Uh, Mexico's stronger, Thailand's stronger. And I'm talking about the public schools. Um, but what's strange about it is that Puerto Rico is America's third largest school district. New York's number one, LA's number two. So you have over 400,000 students that are getting this third, third, second to third world uh, level of education. And when you look at the money that's coming in, the U.S. government uh, gives based off of, uh, you know, the census data. So they're giving, you know, $3.5 billion a year, every year to Puerto Rican education. But the education is, you know, not where it should be. Let's just say that, you know, over 90% of uh, schools are not uh, at an adequate level of, you know, 21st century uh, tools and skills and stuff like that. So very, very shocking uh, to see this. And though I just got to Puerto Rico about 18 months ago, I immediately felt, I mean, they have a blue passport. I have a blue passport. They're American. I'm American. I grew I went to public school in San Diego and I had a really great education. And I can say that, I mean, honestly, it's a world-class education if you compare it to so many other countries in the world. And I've, I've been privileged to have that experience. So I know the value of the education that American kids get really at no cost to, to parents and to see so many American kids here, uh, suffering, uh, really just suffering and, and just sabotaging everyone's future on the island. Um, it was uh, definitely a call to action for us. And so concurrently, as this was happening, um, people thought we were here for the X60. And we were not, we were just here to write a book, hang out, and, and we we're actually going to go back to our cushy international teaching jobs. Um, you know, after this, however, uh, we learned about Act 60 and, and knew that Hey, people have to donate ten thousand dollars every year to a, a nonprofit of their choice. And I started researching. Well, where are all the nonprofits in education that are improving and modernizing education in Puerto Rico, which is desperately needed? And I just we just couldn't find any. And the few education um, nonprofits we talked to, they they were not impressive by any by any means. So we just kind of looked at each other and said, let's let's do our thing. And and we created uh, Tech My School. So this is kind of how we are part of the solution. We cannot uh, control government. We cannot, um, there's a lot of things that are out of our control. So we wanted to find a solution that was out of the box, but would help uh, the futures of all these American kids who are being not just left behind, just, you know, they're on fire. They're, they are completely, uh, they're not even in the picture. Um, so what is Tech My School? It's a nonprofit organization dedicating to modernizing and improving education um, in Puerto Rico. And we do so by better leveraging technology, among many other things. Really, it should be called Teach My School. Uh, the A is silent in the tech, um, but we just don't want to offend anyone. And it's easy just to say, hey, would you guys like a free iPad? And then we can kind of go in there and work with schools. Um, so yeah, our mission is to modernize the education of Puerto Rico. And our goal, our vision is to create highly skilled next generation entrepreneurs, innovators, 
and empowered learners so that they can maximize the, the human capital of Puerto Rico. And we also have these the, the, the green parrot as our uh, mascot and through our core values uh, because uh, it kind of symbolizes the, uh, the unique culture and strength of Puerto Rico and uh, Puerto, uh, parrots are a very intelligent creature. So we just thought it was a great fit for us. Um, my wife and I are the founders. Uh, I began education actually on an American island school in uh, Honolulu, Hawaii, is where I started education in the inner cities there. And I, I was expecting it to be something similar to that here, but it's just so far below that, which is why we had to uh, you know, start this endeavor. Um, but I had been a teacher for you know over 10 years, and then I became a teacher trainer, and then I became a CTO the like a tech director of schools where my job is to think forwardly about um, education and where kids uh, will need skills uh, for 2035, 2045, and how do we get there and backward plan uh, from there. And then also just maximizing technology that we have now uh, in classrooms. And my wife, uh, also an educator, I've uh, been teaching since 2008. She's taught uh, predominantly primary school, but then she also has done teacher training and she taught STEAM for a number of years. So yeah, we lived uh, all around uh, the world, and uh, yeah, I wrote a book and um, master's in ed tech. So pretty qualified for the uh, the job that we're doing. We have a fairly large team of really highly qualified individuals who are superintendents, other tech directors, um, directors of development. Um, we have some retired educators. Uh, we have some financial guys who are with Seaman. So. A lot of really talented people are on our team, and these are all volunteers who uh, just believe in the mission and are trying to improve the education of Puerto Rico. And we know um, because we've spent you know, our careers helping uh, instill lasting uh, change in school, successful change. And for that to happen, you need to have a number of, of different building blocks. And so we, ha we have the formula to really make impactful change in schools. We're not just showing up with an iPad and then taking a picture and leaving. Uh, we're working with teachers every single uh, week, every month with directors every day, they're on the phone, we're texting. Um, and then we have uh, classes for kids. We're doing, we're doing it all, but we know the, the building blocks that come in that are a part of this. So, and this is something that, that we've been doing. We've been doing uh, educational conferences and teaching other uh, school leaders on how to uh, ensure you have successful uh, blocks for change. We focus on three uh, service fundamentals. So that's improving educational uh, systems, building the capacity of others and empowering kids. So basically we all want kids to succeed, but unless you have systems at work and people who know what they're doing, that's not gonna happen. So that's kind of the three facets that we focus on. And so what it kind of looks like is essentially a, uh, equipping uh, classrooms with the latest technologies, training educators on uh, you know, the skills they need, and then ensuring kids are getting these skills so they can create, contrib contribute, and um, compete in the informational economy. And then for schools, how it works, any school on the island, um, really they reach out to us or we find them um, and they say, hey, we need help and we say yes. It's just as simple as that. Um, we then go in and do a needs assessment. It's a 130 point um, needs assessment. and we create a plan. Uh, we create a one-year plan and a four-year plan. Where they are for this year and then how we're going to get for the next four years. And then based off that plan, we uh, find what resources we need to deploy it. And then we work for free. It's all the work, all the things that we do for schools here are free, simply because the teachers are making you know $1,500 a month. Schools don't have libraries. They don't have, uh, the, it's, it's insane, uh, the lack of resources and lack of um, just capital these schools have. So um, yeah, the, the model is for schools to, it says we want to make it as easy as possible for schools. And then throughout this process, we collect data, we refine this, uh, our practice through this data, and then we have that drive what we do. And uh, yeah, it's been a very uh, fun and successful uh, uh, model thus far with the schools. And we have a multitude of services. You can check this out on our website, but you know, from teacher training, administrative collaboration, student empowerment, really we go in and we, we break a school down and build it back up. Um, but we do so uh, very gently and in partnership with the schools because uh, it's important for them to embody uh, the change and for them to want the change. So again, as long as they say yes and they agree to their end of the bargain and they're doing their part, 
it's a really uh, great, uh, great thing for Puerto Rico. And so here's some uh, media and exemplars, um, just different things that we've done, whether it's, you know, professional developments to building websites for school, lots of training, lots of planning, um, volunteers stepping in and, and working with schools, uh, ensuring kids get the right skills and uh, partnering with NGOs, um, et cetera. So uh, it's been really great. It's been a really great journey so far. And just some quick success stories from last month. Uh, we were able to outfit uh, two different schools with uh, sets of IMAX. So one school is in Lakeo, one is in Rincon. Um, in Lakeo, we were predominantly focused on the devices for the teachers um, because they we would go in and train them and they didn't have any devices to uh, you know work on as we're trying to train them. So we made sure that they had the devices, we're training them how to use it, that kind of thing. And then in the other school, it was much more uh, student-centered. Uh, they didn't have a library. So we brought forth a digital library of 40,000 books and modeled for the teachers how kids could uh, very easily uh, utilize a library and, and taught them how to use it and, and stuff like that. So um, that was just two, two quick things from uh, last month. Um, but it's just visibly, 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 visibly pleasing uh, just because you can see the, the, the IMAX there. Um, just so you can quickly see uh, some of our schools and partners, we've got four schools around uh, the island thus, uh, so far. We've been in operations for about um, eh, about 14 months. So within the first school year last year, was, we started with uh, Robertson, and then um, we expanded to four schools uh, in the second academic school year. Uh, it's the first year for the, those three in our second academic year with Robertson. And our partners, we have GoReact, which is a software company, uh, Atlantic University, who've been great. They're in Guaynabo. They're the most like tech-centered university on the island. Obviously, PR Advantage. Um, FAX is a student information system that they help us modernize uh, all the back-end systems of schools. And also, they um, give us rates that are super, super low based off the tuition of the schools. So normally, um, you know, they'd be charging like $10,000 a year for a school. For, they'll give us rates that are more like you know, 700 or something like that. So they've been really great for us. And uh, Blue Tide, which is a, a really interesting um, NGO. So uh, one of the ways that PR Advantage and Tech My School have been working together, besides their generosity and just obviously giving us a platform and, and uh, working with us in that sense, um, is simply uh, bringing about awareness. Um, so Angela, if you'd like, you can talk a bit about uh, Act 135? Yes. Um, so Act 135, um, which is really part of Act 60 these days, but some people still know it by the old um, law number, is specifically engineered to help younger people that grew up in Puerto Rico or at least graduated high school in Puerto Rico to have an opportunity also for tax incentives. So it only is available to kids that um, graduated high school in Puerto Rico and also to people who are under uh, 35 years in age when they apply. And it gives those people, if they're starting a new business, um, no tax on their first 500K of income for any new business for the first three years. So it can be a real leg up and it's something that we're excited to make sure that kids in Puerto Rico know about if they have any kind of an entrepreneurial bent. So we're going to help to present this, you know, when Robbie and his team have people who may be eligible for it and, and help kids in Puerto Rico also have a leg up, you know, from a uh, business starting st uh, standpoint. Yeah, definitely. So we'll, we'll go into the high school and uh, I'm thinking probably in the spring just because they're getting closer to graduation. And so they can use that as something to kind of think about um, as they move on in their um, educational and, and careers in their life. Um, so if you'd be like if you'd like to uh, to help us and join our mission and invest in Puerto Rico, because you know education is the foundation of society. Uh, obviously, if you have uh, any used technology, um, a lot of corporations will donate old tech, old being like three or four years because they're buying it for their clients or their uh, you know employees or whatever. 
And so we'll take that tech and we'll put it into classrooms. Obviously the Act 60 donations um, are pivotal um, because that's uh, going to keep us going and um, uh, definitely fund all of the work that we're doing. So if you're an Act 60 donor, we highly appreciate that. Um, if your business would like to partner with us in any way, there's so many different ways that we can kind of structure this uh, to help uh, schools and communities and parents. That was another thing I didn't mention. We do a lot of parent outreach and uh, training for parents as well. And then also, if you have any free time, we'd love to have you join our team. Um, it's much more than just, you know, getting in the classroom and teaching kids. It's also uh, marketing. There's business sense. Uh, there's just so many things that go into an entrepreneurship venture that you may have specialties that could be really helpful for us uh, growing and, and just being more successful on the island. Um, and so if you're asking yourself why te uh, support Tech My School over so many other nonprofits, really it's just because, you know, all Puerto Rican children and really all children uh, around the world deserve a world-class education. And we're helping them uh, do that through a technology um, by bridging that gap. Um, and I wanted to uh, end with this. Uh, and around 1965, there was a country that got newfound independence. Um, they lived mostly in shanties. 75% um, of the uh, country was living in basically these makeshift, uh, makeshift huts. And uh, it was a very poor, poor little island country. So uh, the leadership got together and said, okay, we're a country now. What do we do? Well, we can do a couple of things. One, we can lead our country by uh, military force, use all of our money to create a large military, and we can rule by thumb um, and impose our will. The second thing that they uh, could have done was they could sell all little natural resources the country had um, to larger countries that are neighboring, where they could kind of harvest all the natural resources. The leadership would you know, live wealthy, but the, the people would live very poor. The third option was they, they could go into education and they could invest all of their money and time and effort into education. And so they chose uh, that. They chose to go into the third option, option three with education. They uh, went to all the leading countries at the time in education, Germany, Japan, um, the US, Canada, and other countries in Europe, and just studied how they taught school, brought in the best to kind of consult them and to uh, teach um, their teachers on how to, how to modernize their education. And within one generation, they are now the uh, financial capital of Southeast Asia. This island uh, poor fishing village with malaria was transformed into a place today that's called Singapore, which is one of the most modern and uh, if not the best, one of the best uh, education uh, scoring countries in the world. So for us, I, I really don't see why Puerto Rico couldn't follow in this uh, model. And, and if they focused in education, I really believe that so many problems around the island and just society in general could be uh, vastly improved through education. So I will leave you with that thought. Um, if you'd like any more information on Tech My School, obviously we have a bunch of social, me social medias, uh, the likely suspects, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, also LinkedIn. Um, our website is techmyschool.org. And uh, yeah, my number is there. We're fully transparent. With anything you'd like to see, we'll show you everything if you're interested. Um, and our EIN number is there as well. So fully tax deductible. And that is it, I think. Do we have any questions? So I think that we basically have kind of set these up so that it's muted just to be sure that we don't have too much crazy back and forth, although it's a pretty small attendee list today. So maybe I will just unmute in case anybody just wants to ask a question free form. Um, just one second. I have to change the hosting a bit. Just one second. No worries. Okay, so anybody who is um, on who wants to ask a question, this is your time. If you have any anything to ask, feel free. Um, Angela, I have a, uh, a question. Um, 
What are your thoughts on the perception of Act 60 residents uh, locally here in Puerto Rico? And how could Tech My School change that uh, kind of reputation if uh, they were to, to be a part of this mission? So I think that's a fantastic question. Um, basically, um, a lot of people in Puerto Rico aren't really a huge fan of the Act 60 investor program. <laughs> Some people um, are more indifferent to it. Some people even like it. But there are a few, especially the people who are more vocal, tend to be the ones that don't like it. And there's a perceived unfairness, which isn't necessarily... Um, unfair to say, <laughs> um, because it's not something that people who grew up in Puerto Rico and never left Puerto Rico can get. It's something only eligible to people who have been out. If you lived in Puerto Rico your whole life, you'd have to leave for a while for several years during a specific period to be able to apply. So, you know, there's some resentment. Um, and that's only kind of grown over over the years. There are some of us who've even contributed to that by maybe not always being so polite or so like embracing of the Puerto Rico culture. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I feel it's really important for people who are enjoying these benefits, especially, or just enjoying Puerto Rico in general as, as um, newbies here to be gracious, you know, and being able to actually contribute to the island in various ways can only help that. Um, I think it's always a little delicate to not look like you're a quote unquote white savior and, you know, say, well, we know better than you how to educate your kids, which Robbie is already very sensitive to. And, you know, they're careful to, um, you know, be, be respectful. Um, but if there are things that we can bring, you know, some of us, are, I mean, the reason we're coming here usually is because we have some additional income or some investment income or are hoping to. And that's what Puerto Rico wants is to bring that income to the economy here. Um, so if we can actually show that we're not just taking, but we're actually giving back, that can only help relations and general, you know, um, happiness of those people with people like us and probably also help to continue for it to be available for longer because obviously if it's an unpopular program eventually it will um lose political backing and maybe you know eventually they could um shorten its its the lifespan it might have otherwise had so um i think it's really important for us to support things like tech my school for that reason as well as just the fact that we're required to so it was a little long-winded. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to, yeah, piggyback off that and say, yeah, thank you. But also, um, yeah, it's just first, first and foremost, everything we do is in partnership with the school. So it's definitely not a you know top-down approach. It's much more customer service based. It's much more again in partnership. Um, but yeah, there's there's just this. Since we've been here, we've learned uh, a lot about just different nonprofits and those kinds of things. And and there are some nonprofits out there that are a little bit more self-serving. And so because everything we do is so community oriented and everything's free for schools and we're in partnership with them, it really, I think, will help with the uh, it's, it's it's not we don't fit the narrative of these um, people coming to Puerto Rico and taking advantage of things and not giving back and not being a part of the community. It's, it's the opposite of that. We are helping not only the, uh, the schools and the kids in the future of Puerto Rico, but we're doing so in a way that is very much, um, again, uh, in, in conjunction with the schools and the kids and, and the teachers. So um, I, I think that that's an important part of this because I think it'll make your life a little easier if, uh, you know, people are getting their, their kids are, are benefiting from getting um, the services that we provide. Because um, again, we're, we're targeting, you know, uh, poor schools, low income schools, and uh, working with as many people on the island as we possibly can. And again, just really open about, yes, we will take you, we will work with you. So I think that's that's a different narrative than someone coming here and, and just 
you know, creating a social club for themselves and their friends and then donating to that. Um, or just, you know, something kind of random that isn't super transparent. So. Yeah, I have to say checking out charities myself, I got kind of jaded because I, and that's why personally I've sort of resisted having PRA endorse any charities because I just didn't ever feel that confident that the money that I donated was going to really go to fixing the problem. And in this case, I feel like it really does. I mean, I asked, you know, Robbie, can I see where all the money spent? And you completely just were like, yeah, you can see anything yeah. you want, you know? And that is amazing to me. Cause I don't, I don't even know anybody who does that actually. So um, you even had more transparency than I even like, <laughs> was hoping for, you know, I was just like, wow, you don't even have to show me that much for me to be happy, you know, but um, yeah, that was, um, that was just really great. Yeah. I mean, the thing is too, is that, I mean, we see, I've spent time in other countries where corruption is very rampant and uh, I, I just, it hurts my heart to see it. And, and uh, I mean, we came here, the house I'm in now, I bought it before we started the nonprofit. We just fell in love with the place, bought a house, we don't owe anything on it. And uh, so it's like, I don't need to steal from people. I don't need to steal from children or their futures. You know what I mean? It's all about. That's good. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> and it's just crazy to think that that's that actually happens, but it is. It's happening every day. And, uh, you know, again, we just don't fit that narrative. So hopefully if you're going to donate with uh, Tech My School and you talk about us or you reference us, it'll be positive uh, things. Um, and uh Hopefully you can join our mission and be a part of this journey with us. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I think we're already over time. So if there's no attendee questions, we could probably just go ahead and wrap it up. Awesome. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. And then if anyone wants to donate, um, you can go to our website again, uh, techmyschool.org backslash donate. There's a lot of different options on there. There's um, PayPal, Give Butter. Uh, there's also Cash App if you're crypto. Um, or if you'd like Banco Popular or a check, uh, that's also very easy. You can email us at info at techmyschool.org and uh, you can just email us a check and that'll work as well. So uh, once that happens, there's also we have a, a, a list of depending on how much you donate, there's a donor kind of we have a, like tiered system. So there's like the blue parrots, the golden parrots, and the platinum parrots. And then each one of them gives you a little bit of a, uh, a thank you uh, for your contribution and, and uh, more information and stuff like that. So check us out. All right. Thanks a lot, Robbie. And we'll be sending this um, recording and webinar out to everybody who registered as well. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks, Angela. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye.